Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of the election management committee has directed that we are going to count the ballots for this box, keep a tally, then we go to the next box. We are going to count for this box. No, we are going to do it that way. No, no, we do it that way. A lot has been happening uh, still at uh, the vote counting of the convention at uh, Tundu. I mean, we've been seeing the numbers coming out. So maybe we might just say that this day uh, projection is beginning to kick in. And let's just wait, I must say, till the final numbers come in. But the projections probably beginning to kick in. Uh, Balati Dubu taking the lead already by most of the votes are counted thus far. We still have uh, predominantly a long way to go. Right, yes, and joining us now as we discuss the APC presidential primary, which is still ongoing, is Professor Anthony Killer, Professor of Strategy and Development, Centre Director at the Centre for International Advanced and okay. Professional Studies. Good morning, Prof. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you for good, joining us this morning. Good morning. Good to be here. So can you give us, as well, you know, we've been watching the votes being counted and what have you, but can you give us an overview, your impressions so far? Well, I think... Overall, there's been you know, a lot of suspense and drama and unexpected thing, which makes me think um, Hollywood and um, Nollywood and the and all entertainment industry should be put on notice that politicians are going to be giving them a run for their money. Lots of dramas and persona, um, which makes it fascinating, except it's getting too long. And um, I, I, I think the process has not been managed very well. The arena of the, the floor of the convention looks beautiful. That was well done. Um, but I think the whole process itself, there's a lot of improvisation going on. And, um, and I think that the contestants, some of them have wasted people's time, I, I dare say. Because I think a lot of things that they were doing yesterday could have been done way earlier. You don't, you don't just people, put people on hold for that much. But you know, overall, it's going on. The speeches were meant to be the main dish of the day. And, you know, we've heard many of them, and a lot of people have commented on them. I have my views on, on those speeches as well. Do share. What are your views on the speeches? Well, I think, okay, so let's divide into two. You know, for young people who are growing up, there's a lot of things to learn as not to do in many of those speeches that, that got up there. Number one is that if you have a two-minute speech, learn to stick to two minutes. And if you have a two-minute speech, do not spend 47 seconds of your speech greeting people name by name. You, you know, we should learn to say ladies and gentlemen and move on with it. And that's the way to use time productively. Um, when you're giving a speech, I, I think you should learn to identify your audience and address that audience, not just one person. Something very worrisome happened in those speeches yesterday. And that is this 
personality cult of the president. I'm worried because it's not democratic, it's not healthy for creating free thinking individuals. And, um, and, and this idea of you know, people who other people call leaders groveling to one person in something that is worrisome for a system that, who has a fragile democracy. We need to be careful of it because whether this president abuses that deference or not is not the issue. The issue is that somebody might abuse it tomorrow if the present person is not abusing it now. I think the best speech of the day was the one done by Professor Yemi Oshibajo, the, the vice president. He was followed by Dr. Tunde Bakari, gave the second best speech. I was impressed by Rocha's or Korocha's slant of saying, call your families and help you decide, you know, like call a friend kind of thing. If you're making a pitch, it's a good idea to um, connect with the imaginary dear ones of those that will decide your fate when you're making a speech. And, and that is one thing that Okorocha um, did very well. I think um, Honorable Dimeji's bank only was high on delivery low on content. It wasn't very, you know, inspiring. And, you know, and on and on like that. I think Ashwa Jibola Sinubu was good on content, low on delivery. And um, so, you know, that, at least, you know, fair on delivery, actually low on delivery, just good on content. Um, and then on and on, then some speeches just fell into oblivion. Um, some people will be remembered for bad things, like somebody who came up there as if he was asking for a Barry State term not to present his own self. That was a bit worrisome. Uh, I'm not very happy. Who was that? Um, well, it's so bad I can't remember his name. Better not to remember, I guess. Um, I, I'm not very happy with the performance of the female participant. It's not a very nice thing to say, but I think it must be said. I think she did a disservice to the future of um, female politicians, you know, in all that drama thing. This country is a country that has very prepared, very respected, seasoned um, female citizens that can aspire for office. And that image we saw yesterday does not represent them, in my view. OK. Uh, I'd, I'd also like to ask you this. Uh, what would you, what, what would be sort of like uh, your assessment on the mindset behind those speeches? Because you said the cult following. Yes. It was as though every one of them were there just to serenade the president. Mm. But I ask again, is that not who we are? Are we not, you know, people that will set, massage the ego of others just to curry favor? Is that not the society we've built, the society of I service as it were? So is that not a reflection of our society? Well, unfortunately, a part of our society, you know, a very large part of our society seems to be that way. But unfortunately, this kind of behavior um, sort of consolidate that view. And I think what's for us is that the symbol of leadership, which is politics in the society, is also following that trend, is leading that trend. That is why it worries me, you know, if it was elsewhere. So that you don't get in surprise when you have that abuses in offices or in community because of this very deferential society. But we must, so, sorry, deferential standard that we're laying. But we must emphasize that such deferential mode of being is alien to democracy. That's the whole point. That the whole point of democracy is individualism, is free thinking, dissent, and you know, even eccentricity is all part of it. So this idea of conforming and deferring is something that I think some people need to take a closer look at because it is dangerous. It has never augured well where the very many conform to one or even few. It, it has never worked in history. It always leads to disaster. The society that prospered, the society, contrary to what people think, the society that are united and developed are societies where dissent is part of it. There are systems where people can decide not to agree on things, but then they conform to the law, not to the person. Well, this time next year, there'll be a new person to grovel to, a new <laughs> target for all the sycophants. But let's talk about generally what you saw. 
payout yesterday. Yeah. I mean, in terms of organization, what are your thoughts, even that the voting continues till now? In terms of the interplay between the different aspirants, we're a long way off, as far as my personal opinion, from what was expected. If you go back to the Jonathan era, yeah. where seven governors walked out on him yeah. at the PDP convention in front of God and everybody, <laughs> and you also had PDP stalwarts joining that walkout, yeah. none of that happened here. None of that happened so there. what's your take on the whole well, thing? Well, none of that is right. And I think both the APC and the PDP convention that went through, they improved versions of what they had before. But let's put it into context. Now, people walked out on Jonathan because they're contestant. People are not walking out on the current president because he's not contesting. So in a way, you know, he's put there almost like a god that people are deifying, the apotheosis of Buari, what some, what some people came to do um, yesterday. So he's not part of the contention. But then you're right. I think, um, you know, sort of competitive as the competition is, I think people are less cantankerous. And the fact that they were, you know, conceding to each other or step down, as we say, you know, conceding and letting go and endorsing somebody else. It's a good sign in the sense that, well, for the party, in the sense that it shows that it will be less um, um, divisive at the end of it. So th that's a good thing. I think the aesthetics was good. Let's make that out. And I think APC had a better voting ballot box than PDP, that must be said, because yeah. PDP came with a basket-like kind of thing. APC, at least, they, they made something white and and beautiful. The, while the aesthetics is good, I'm worried about the process. Number one, this idea of people writing names, and then if you can't write it, somebody will have to write it for you, worries me. Number one, mm. you must have a good handwriting. This is a bad day mm. to be a bad, bad handwriting if you're a delegate. Number two is that if you can't write and people have to write for you, that opens to two things. One, the vote is not very secret to who knows if people can write for you, or whatever they write. Right, mm. thank you, Prof.